The following program is made possible by the partners and friends of Ronnie Phillips Ministries International. You were created to be more than you are now, to love more than you love now, and to live a life that's fully alive. Take a few minutes and join Pastor Ronnie Phillips for a message of grace that will help you live fully alive. Stay up to date with everything happening with Ronnie Phillips Ministries International. Go to RonniePhillips.org and subscribe to our email list so you can be the first to know about mission trips, new ministry resources, how to watch Pastor Ronnie, and when he will be speaking in a city near you. Subscribe to his podcast so you never miss a sermon. And partner with him today for just $10 a month to help him deliver hope and help through missions, media, and the message of grace. Don't miss a sermon or a show. Subscribe to Pastor Ronnie's YouTube channel and be sure to turn on notifications so you'll know when he uploads a new video. Follow him on Instagram too for more exclusive content. Greetings partners and friends. This is Pastor Ronnie Phillips Jr., lead pastor of Abbas House and founder of Ronnie Phillips Ministries International. Today I want to bring you a message that I brought to our church during the COVID-19 virus at the height of it that I believe will bring you strength for whatever season you are in. You know, God is still on the throne no matter what you are going through and He wants you to know that there is more available to you and that you are more than a conqueror. You are not what they said you were. You are not what you did. You are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus and you have purpose. I want you to grab hold of this revelation today and be blessed by it. Enjoy. What does it mean to be a conqueror? It means we are continuously and overwhelmingly victorious over our adversary. This is a mindset of more. This is the ability to stay motivated when you don't feel like doing anything. It's a mindset. It's the mind of Christ. In Revelations chapter 2 and 3, God promises blessings to conquerors. He says, I will grant the tree of life in the paradise of God. I will feed and protect and bless conquerors. I will give them authority over the nations. Yes, that's you. I will give them authority over the nations. I will confess their names before my Father and the angels. Can I say this? We are conquerors because Jesus conquered. Abraham conquered fear, but he was more than a conqueror. Jacob conquered his past, his deceitful past, but he was more than a conqueror. Moses conquered insecurity, a speech impediment, and anger, but he was more than a conqueror. God knew him by name. Joseph conquered his brothers. The Bible says they saw him coming. I tell you, there's some people out there, they've seen you coming, and they've already planned a way to destroy you or defeat you and, 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 and throw you into the pit of life. But I'm telling you, they may see you coming, but God is with you, and you are more than a conqueror. Joseph conquered the pit, the prison, the palace, Potiphar's house. But let me say this, he was more than a conqueror. He's a type and shadow of Jesus Christ. David, the shepherd boy, conquered Goliath, but he was more than a conqueror. You know, you can't live in one defeat and you can't live in one victory. You have to continuously declare your victory over the enemy. That's what makes you a conqueror. It's not one good day and it's not one bad day. It's the fact that though I've been knocked down, I'm going to get back up and I'm not quitting. I'm not going to let anybody keep me from serving Jesus, from worshiping him and from loving him. We are more than conquerors. But most of all, Jesus conquered the grave, but he was more than a conqueror. He was more than just someone that conquered the grave. He's king of all kings. He's Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's our lover, our friend, our future. He forgives us when we fall. He never leaves us, and he's with us, America. He's with us, world. He's with us, Abba South. Jesus hasn't left his place. He knows what's going on. He would, God would tell Habakkuk, he said, if I told you what I was doing, it would freak you out. That's not what it says. I'm paraphrasing. But he says, if I told you what I was doing, you wouldn't understand it. 
You'd be perplexed by it. We don't have to understand everything God's doing. We just need to acknowledge the fact that God's still on the throne, that he's still doing what he says he would do. You know, how you see God is how you serve God. For instance, if you see God as a dictator, you'll approach God with fear. If you see God just as a friend, you'll approach him in a casual manner. You won't approach him with the honor that he deserves. If you see God as just your salvation, your ticket into heaven, just a safety precaution, then you'll miss God's purpose for your life. You'll miss the more than a conqueror lifestyle that God has for you. Those who love God are called by him and those who love God will be ushered by him to heaven. So let's get into the text. Romans 8 verse 28, let's get into this gold. And we know that all things, the phrase all things in the Greek means far beyond the struggles and events on planet earth. All things work together. That phrase in the Greek is synergy. We get our word synergy from it. This is to create and eliminate, connect and disconnect, shape and forge, press and stretch, move and operate, arrange and influence. For all things work together for good. The Greek word agathon. This is ultimate good. See, it may not feel good to you. It may not feel good to me right now. It may not feel good while we're going through it. But the ultimate good means that it lines up with God's sovereign will. Every Christian has to understand the difference between the south wind that will shipwreck you and the sovereign wind that comes from heaven. Sometimes the south wind will blow a disease in our atmosphere. Sometimes negative things happen to God's people. But there is a sovereign wind of the Spirit. There is a sovereign will that will carry you into your destiny. Ultimate good to those who love God. To those who love God. God is interested in those who love Him. To those who are called according to his purpose, not their purpose. We're always talking about your purpose and my purpose and an individual purpose. According to his purpose is what the word says. God doesn't involve himself in the affairs of those who don't love him. My goodness. God is interested in those who love him and he has promises for those of us who love him. Do you love him? Do you love him? How do you love him? You obey him. You worship him. You spend time with him. You don't let the circumstances of this world define you. You get in your word. You get in your prayer closet. You get your praise on. That's how you have intimacy with God. And then it goes on to say, for whom he foreknew. I love that word. Jeremiah would say that God knew him before he was ever even in his mother's womb. He foreknew. That means before you were ever even conceived, God knew you. He knew the plans he had for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. God knew who you'd be, what you'd do, where you'd go, and he specifically designed you for a purpose. Somebody say amen wherever you are. Hallelujah. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined. I love this word. It means to set forth a path. To set forth a path. Those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So the process that God has us on, the journey, the complex journey God has us on, all leads to one thing. For us to be conformed to the image of our creator. For us to be conformed to Jesus. For us to fulfill the purpose that Jesus has for us. That's what it's all about. Everything you've been through. Every heartache. Every pain. Every loss. All was conforming you to the image of his son Jesus. I don't know about you. But that gets me excited. It says that he might be the firstborn among Many brethren, Colossians said that Jesus is the firstborn over all creation. The Bible says that he is the firstborn from the dead. He is ruler of all kings to him who loved us and released us from our sins. He is the firstborn in revelation among many brethren. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ 
still sits on the throne and he loves you so much and he wants to use you even in this season, even in quarantine. God wants to speak to you. God wants to save you. God wants to fill you. God wants to bless you. Will you let him? Maybe, just maybe, you are where you are. You've been through what you've been through because God wanted to change you. God wanted to redirect you. God wanted to form you to his son. Moreover, whom he predestined, he called. Whom he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. So there is a complex journey in front of us. He knew you before you were ever born. He set forth a path for you. You have a free will to get in on that path. And if he set forth a path for you, he called you, he justified you, which means he cleaned you up and made you just as if you'd never sinned. And eventually you're going to be usher, ushered into glory by the angels because that's the good news of the gospel. That's how it ends. So no matter what happens with whatever you're dealing with today, whether you're in a hospital bed with cancer or you have contracted this virus, the news is still good if you know Jesus Christ. You have an eternity in heaven, in glory, waiting on you. And God's word's true. His promises are true. Don't give up in this moment. You are more than a conqueror. Just say that with me wherever you are at home. Just say, I'm more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? You don't know my past. You don't know the family I came from. If God be for us, who could be against us? I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. I don't know how I'm going to survive in my church. If God be for us, who can be against us? I don't know how I'm going to beat this diagnosis. If God be for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore, he is risen. He's at the right hand of God, and he is making intercession for us. He is at the right hand of God, and he lives to make intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are all killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. And here's the gold in the gold. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. All of us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There are four words for love. Eros, storche. There is also agape. Eros, storche, phileo. And agape, but the key word is agape. That's the Jesus kind of love. That is a sacrificial servant love. That means I can't really describe it. There's not a verb big enough to describe it, but I see it on a cross. I see it washing the defeat of the disciples. I see it turning water into wine. I see it healing a paralytic man on a religious holy day. I see it shouting, if any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. I see it in the Beatitudes. I see it at the Mount of Olives. I see it in Gethsemane dripping blood from his brow. I see it there. Do you see it? That's the only way you can truly define the love that Jesus offers is through the life and the words of Jesus Christ through the words of Jesus Christ so I want to release some prophetic declarations over your life number one God is working it out God is working it out whatever it is for you he is working it out if you have the right mindset and you understand the mystery which is Christ in you the hope of glory you have the right mindset you understand the mysteries of Christ 
and you are motivated by the Holy Spirit, God is working it out. You need to just say that to your children or to the people around you. God is working it out. Don't let fear win. Don't let doubt win. Don't let this season defeat you. God is working it out. That's what the text says. All things work together for the good. For those who love God and who are called according to his purpose, God is working it out. Count on it, pray for it, and go ahead and celebrate it. Number two, his path comes to his end. Things end the way God wants them to end. Make no mistake about it, and his ways are not our ways. And what he is doing, and make no mistake about it, God is in this season we are in. There is a purpose for it in regards to his kingdom, his churches, his people, our government. God is using this to bring about change, to bring about unity, to bring prayer back. I believe with all of my heart that God is working it out. But his path comes to his end. You know, predestination, as I told you, means to set forth a path. To set forth the path. Every person listening to this, God created a path for you. You have to choose to get in on God's plan for your life, his path for your life. You know, you may have a plan for your life, and it may be prospering. But ultimately, life's about eternity. It's about crowns in heaven. It's about more, more, more. You are more than a conqueror. Then that means you want and you have more than this world has to offer That's the Zoe life. That's more. More. God has more for us. Jesus Christ still has a plan and a pathway for you. It's time to give up that bitterness. Forgive those that hurt you. Embrace your destiny. March forward in the kingdom of God and trust him with a new place of grace. He's got a new place of grace for you. He's got a new assignment for you. He may even have a new church for you. God wants to use you, and you need to listen to his voice in this season. But his path comes to his end. His path comes to his end. Number three, he is for us, not against us. You know, I'm amazed at Christians during difficult seasons. So easy quit on God, so quick to judge, ready to jump ship, ready to give up, full-blown panic mode. Christians ought to be the most stable people in the world, the most faithful people in the world, the most positive people in the world, the most loving people in the world. Not that any of us are going to be perfect, but here's the thing. As Christians, we need to be salt and light. We need to preserve that which is good. We need to shine light in dark places. We need to walk out this Zoe more than a conqueror life. God wants us to live in victory, not defeat. He wants us to encourage people. My ministry, Ronnie Phillips Ministries International, is working locally with a couple of organizations to help feed children during this season. And I'm not bragging on myself. I'm bragging on my partners. And I'm even talking to a restaurant owner about having a drive up for families that need food. I'm, I'm trying because one, I'm bored stiff sitting in my house. And two, I really want to be the kind of Christian God's called me to be, the kind of pastor he's called me to be, the kind of shepherd he's called me to be in this season. But I believe God has a plan for you in this season too. God wants you to do your very best for the people in your life, for your community. God wants you wherever you live. Maybe you're even in another country. We're on in Pakistan now. God wants you to be a light where you are. God wants to bless you. And God wants to use you. If he is for you, nobody can be against you. Nobody will win against you. No one can stop you. He prepares a table in the presence of your enemies. God will promote you in front of your enemies. He will bless you in front of your enemies. He'll prosper you in front of your enemies. Why? Because you love him. You love him. That's why. Because you are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. You're more than just a one-hit wonder. You're more than just a salvation experience. You're more than just one circumstance, one negative outcome, one sin mess up. You are more than a conqueror. You are going after today to live a lifestyle of victory, a lifestyle 
of victory. Number four, he doesn't condemn conquerors. Who is it that condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who sits at the right hand of God, who makes intercession for us. It says earlier in chapter 8, as we get into the gold of Romans, therefore there is now no condemnation, none to those who are in Christ Jesus. Listen, I lived many years guilty, ashamed and condemned. I felt like because of some sins I had committed and because of the opinions of others that God couldn't use me, from 17 to 23, I lived under that lie. It brought negative thoughts. It brought depression. It brought even suicidal thoughts at times. It was the most miserable season of my life because I thought God was done with me because I viewed God through my own lens of how I was raised and religion. Let me say something to you to set you free if you're watching this. That's not the way my God is. He forgives and remembers it no more. He loves you with an everlasting love. He forgives you. He fills you with his spirit just like the prodigal son. He puts a new ring on your finger which restored his wealth. He puts a new robe on your back that restored your honor. He puts new shoes on your feet to let you know that you're more than a slave. He endorses a party for you with the best wine, the best meat, and the best music because he thinks you are worth celebrating. The God I serve is a loving God. He is a holy God. He is a righteous God, but he is a loving God. You need to understand that he doesn't condemn those of us that love, love him. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. When Jesus died on that cross, he did it so that we would have the victory, so we could walk in the victory. And wherever you are, I want you to understand you are more than a conqueror. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what they've said about you. There's more to you than that. God sees it. He knew it before you were conceived. He's just waiting for you to get in on the pathway that he has planned for you. God doesn't condemn conquerors. He doesn't. He forgives. He wipes us clean. He gives us the Holy Spirit to comfort us, to teach us, to guide us, to fill us, and to fuel us for the journey that we're on. And finally, and I close with this, He has loved us with an everlasting love, with a great love. He has loved us with an everlasting love and a great love. What shall separate us from the love of Christ? We are all accounted as sheep for the slaughter. But yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. More than conquerors through him who loved us. You know, we've talked about his love. We're to love him because he first loved us. God's looking for a people that will love him in this season. Will love him unconditionally. He's looking for a church that will love him and serve him without worrying about the future that will just be his children, his light in this season. Paul would say, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities or powers. Let me tell you, demons, we need to rebuke them, but they have already been defeated by the blood of Jesus. Sometimes I think we give demons too much power. Jesus triumphed, he was triumphant over them at the cross. He made a public spectacle over them, triumphing over them by way of the cross. Listen, the devil is done. He's been defeated. He's a loser. He's a liar. He's a murderer. No weapon formed against you can prosper. Devil, you're a liar. You've already lost. You are no match for the Prince of Peace. I declare healing over our city, our state, our nation, our world. Holy Spirit, blow this virus back to where it came from and originated from and heal our world of it entirely it says nor things present nor things to come we're not to be anxious about things to come what's it going to look like in two weeks I don't know but I know Jesus is still going to be on the throne I know God's still going to love his people I know we still have an inheritance waiting for us in heaven I know there's still a kingdom we're connected to that cannot be shaken I know that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter what's to come. We are more than conquerors. Height, nor depth, or 
any other created thing can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. You know, Jesus loves you so much that he died on a cross for you. And he got up out of the grave three days later and reigned victorious. This wasn't a nursery rhyme. It is proven by evidence. It's proven by history and humanity and the fact that thousands of years later we still worship this Savior. That we feel him by the Holy Spirit. He's still here. He still loves you. He's still on the throne. And he wants you to live a victorious life. Love is our banner. It is our protection. It is our assurance. It is our security. God loves us that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Greater love hath no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice so that we could live free and fully of life. So that we could walk in the fullness. So that we could have the more life. That's why Jesus died. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing can separate you from the finished product that is Jesus Christ. God loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son. And that whosoever, that is everybody, that believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I'm telling you, that is the gospel in one verse. He loves you. You say, Pastor Ronnie, I've never felt loved by God before. I've never had peace with God, but I want it. If that's you, just pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Lord, please come into my heart and save me. Fill me with your spirit and use me for your glory. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to text the word journey. Text it to 555-888 and we'll help you get started. If you need prayer today for healing, if you need a miracle in your life, email us at prayer at abbashouse.com. I pray for every prayer request and I want you to reach out to us. Maybe God's calling you to partner with our ministry. Let me tell you something. We believe that God has called us to take this grace message to the ends of the earth. We are committed to missions. We are committed to media. We are committed most of all to the message of grace. Grace is unmerited, undeserved favor. I need partners. I need friends. I need people who have been blessed to believe in us and so into us. Maybe you're one of those people. I sure hope you are. But either way, no matter who you are, we love you. We believe in you. And God's got a great plan for your life. We hope you'll watch us next time. We're here in Nicaragua and we've seen over 600 people saved. We're here at the Abbas House Children's Center in San Fuegos, Dominican. We've just finished the crusade here in San Fuegos. We've seen thousands saved, many healed tonight. We're having an incredible time in Israel here in Kentucky with Pastor Joey Rogers. We've been holding a revival here. Through missions, media, and the message of grace, Ronnie Phillips Ministries International is bringing help and hope around the world. Your monthly partnership or one-time gift will help us continue feeding kids in other countries, support kids locally, and will help us hold a crusade this summer. Go to RonniePhillips.org to learn more and to donate. Pastor Ronnie Phillips delivers help and hope around the world through missions, media, and the message of grace. Go online to RonniePhillips.org to partner with Pastor Ronnie today and join us again next week for another message that will help you live free and fully alive.